Yes, so since we have understood more or less what land tenure is and why we can't really monitor it with remote sensing, um, let's have a look at uh, examples where we can see in the land cover the effects of different land tenure regimes or different property rights or management schemes. I have brought you a set of examples linked to the seven groups which I have shown before and I would like to start with the environmental um, aspect or uh, conservation as such, uh, where tenure has very visible consequences. You might be very well aware of this um, example I brought you here. Um, it's the Amazon and the south of the Amazon rainforest. What you see here in red are community or communal owned land or indigenous reserves, however you want to call them, which I drew from the global database of the organization Landmark and Landmark Map, where you can have a look at the globally indigenous lands. And when satellite imagery is overlaid with these, you can see that in the south of the Amazon rainforest, that indigenous land is actually key in preserving the Amazon forest, the biodiversity, and also the car for carbon sequestration. This has been recognized also by the United Nations, which have uh, released a report in 2021 explicitly mentioning the importance of land and tenure and recognized land tenure of indigenous communities, and that this is key for conserving our global biodiversity and to um, make sure that we have enough carbon sinks around the globe. So I assume you're pretty well aware of these uh, timelines where we can see growing agricultural land. And also here it's important that we cannot necessarily draw conclusions on the tenure system, but it's in fact a big issue, especially in regions like Mato Grosso or so, where we have local um, people smaller farmers with diverse strategies of income who are evicted to make room and space for large cattle owners which obviously change the landscape the size of the farm the land cover and so we can draw conclusions or assumptions based on satellite imagery the same um, is true if we look at the efficiency of certain land tenure systems it can also be linked to degradation, um, so that one would be on crop production per hectare or in general the land cover linked to the production. What you see here on the left is um, a map of the um, yeah, colonial or white minority rural Zimbabwe, that time called Rhodesia, and in light yellow you see um, yeah communal lands, homelands, they are called differently, where local or indigenous people uh, were grouped to live, while the non-colored area was an um, area um, kept for production of the uh, European descendant white minority. And this very contrasting ownership um, scheme which also had as a consequence different um, densities of population, obviously. But this different tenure regimes, they can still be seen by just having a look at ordinary satellite RGB satellite composites, in this case, Google Earth, where we see um, the different uh, productivity levels and also the different land use strategy resulting from forced uh, tenure and the difference in tenure systems. And obviously this also is a matter of equity. As I've said before, people were forced to live somewhere. They also didn't have and often still don't have the same resources as other farmers. So when we zoom into these contrasting land tenure regimes in Zimbabwe, when you look at the eastern part of this picture, you see um, irrigated, high productivity, 
um, yeah, pivot irrigation and fields. And then in the western part or left part, you would see small parcels of often non-irrigated uh, fields, which produce different crop varieties, um, yeah, which just have a totally different set of production. And this is something we can definitely monitor or evaluate with remote sensing. And if we have the good measures in, for our time series, we could also have a long-term monitoring scheme to see which land is managed how and how efficient different land management or tenure regimes are also compared to each other. The last example which I brought you is now in the bottom up, so from the other side, where we can use high resolution imagery, often from drones, to map certain parcels and then contribute to legality of land tenure. So as I've told you before, we can't really map the levels of tenure security, but using remote sensing methods or data, we can actually contribute to more tenure security or to create cadastres. So that was a very, very brief overview of uh, certain use cases um, where we can use remote sensing to map the effects of land tenure. And uh, let's recap those four examples. I talked about crop production per hectare as an aspect of efficiency of land tenure, which we would map with primary production measures or the normalized difference vegetation index. We talk about, um, I talked about the effectiveness, uh, that means the total area under production, which we could determine with a land use classification. We talk about the aspect of equity, so how big are certain field sizes, or are they irrigated or are they non-irrigated. We would talk about object-based um, classifications or calculations of field sizes and other measures per field. And then I've talked about environmental aspects, in that case, uh, conservation explicitly. And here we could talk about forest cover loss. Those are the four aspects which I want to tackle with you in the uh, practicals. And yeah, let's go.